Good morning. I'm Lisa Wallace, Minister of Discipleship and Mission, and I welcome you all to Wapping Community Church. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this sacred place. This is a vibrant Christian community, and if you don't believe me, just look at your bulletin. It's chocked full of information and lots of great things happening at the church. So I encourage you, Christine laid it out so beautifully, to sit down maybe after the service sometime today when it's quiet and peaceful and look at what's going on and ask God how you would like to be involved. If you would like to begin a new ministry or enter into a ministry here at Wapping Church, it's very easy to do. Just see Reverend Mark or me and we will connect you to the right people and resources to make it happen. So we welcome that opportunity. So we can meet and greet each other by name during the passing of the peace, please pass the pew pads, which are located at the aisle section of each of your pews. And if you're visiting for the first time, this is a great Sunday to be with us. We're thrilled that you're here, and we invite you to um, stop by the gathering room to my right. There's a visitor's table, and if you would sign the visitor registry, we would be able to keep in touch with you. And there's also a free gift from Wapping Community Church on the table as well. The flowers on the communion table are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Deanna Hover by her family and they are exquisite. Please join us in the community room after the service for coffee hour, which will be hosted by the Board of Finance. Thank you so much to the board for signing up to do that. That is a real blessing. Any mission updates or opportunities? Deb. Good morning, Debbie Speaker from the Flower Committee. Um, you can see we have a, a lot of lovely Easter lilies and tulips still left. So if you haven't taken one yet, please feel free to take one today. Put it in your home. We have some out in the gathering room, in the narthex, and also here in the sanctuary. Thanks. Thanks, Deb. Nancy. Good morning, I'm Nancy Basilakis from SPF, and we are hopping this month. We have a lot of fundraisers to help us support our trip to South Dakota to run a summer camp for Native youth. Um, out in the uh, gathering room, there are envelopes. If you um, would like to take one of those, that's one way to support us. Sue Mazer is actually volunteered to do a fundraiser for us for Pampered Chef. So if you have a bridal shower or a wedding or anything going on this spring, please stop by the table in the, um, in the community room at coffee hour and purchase something. All of the proceeds from this, this Pampered Chef fundraiser will go towards our trip. And lastly, I'm headed out to um, sort shoes. We are about, we have about 9,400 shoes. We are 600 away from our goal. So if you have any shoes that you can donate, please drop them off in the SPF room or down, um, there's a cart by the door. Thank you, and I hope you find it in your heart to support us on our mission. Thanks, Dance. Anyone else? All right then, let us begin. Please join me in our call to worship in your bulletins. Come people of God to sing a new song. Clap your hands and shout your praise. Jesus is our good news, our joy and our salvation. In steadfast love and faithfulness, God has done marvelous things. God raised Jesus from the dead. Christ is alive and at work among us. God calls us into partnership with the risen Christ, bidding us to walk boldly in the light. How good it is when sisters and brothers dwell in unity.
remain standing and join in the unison Easter prayer with me. O oh God, God of empty, empty tombs, tombs and, and miraculous victories, God, God of unexplained, unexplained visions and, and surprise appearances, confront us again with, with the mystery of Easter. Easter. Lift us, us out of our stale, stale unimaginative, unimaginative existence to join, to join the, the chorus, chorus of, of exaltation and praise. praise. Clothe us with your power, that we may witness to your saving love, and walk in the ways of righteousness. Amen. Here we gather as God's people, with our friends from far and near. Let our voices sound with praises. Christ has called us here. Now we sing and greet each other. Joy approach our hearts. Here we mingle, bound together. Please turn to your neighbor and greet them with Easter greetings or the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. We come to a time of prayer. Gosh, I guess everybody could hear that, huh? <laughs> well, I, yes, I'm doing my best. Uh, so I will get us started and then I'll come around with the mic. Any concerns or praises you have, just raise your hand. And after each person shares, we'll say, God, hear our prayer. If you would prefer private prayer, please fill out a prayer card in the gathering room and Reverend Mark and I will be praying for you. And don't forget, we also have a prayer chain. So please feel free to call into the church office for anything that might be going on in your life or somebody you love. So let's be in a spirit of prayer. Oh, magnificent God, we are in the celebration of Easter, full throttle. We thank you for your marvelous, mysterious, incredible gift of new life and what that offers to us in our lives. We can be free. We can be free from anything that didn't work out, anything that was a wrong turn, anything that hurt our, ourselves or somebody else we can be free in you and travel lightly in this, in this life and on your path. So we thank you for that. That's a huge victory and a huge blessing in our lives. We praise you for everything you're doing, everything you have done and everything that you will do. We look forward with eagerness to what you're going to do next. We already look at areas of our lives and areas of our community life where things are happening and things are changing and things are growing and moving and we're excited about that. We're also excited about spring coming even though that doesn't seem to be moving nearly as fast as some of the other things that we can see and yet we know that just below the surface incredible things are happening. Growth is happening new life is beginning to bloom and we are moving out of a winter season into a spring season where we get to see results and we get to bask in that. Lord, we look forward to all of the seasons of our lives and we know that each of us might be in different seasons, but we pray that wherever we are in life, we can fully embrace and enjoy that, that we can find something beautiful to do for you and something beautiful to praise you for and something exciting to look on in the horizon of our lives. And we thank you for how you work. It is beautiful and special. We treasure not only what you do, Lord, but who you are, your faithfulness, you who never change, you who always love, 
you who are always with us, you who keep inviting us to come closer and be with you. We take you up on that, Lord. In the silence of our hearts now, we ask that. And now, Lord, we receive all of the forgiveness that you have given to us, and we wipe, we wipe the slate clean with you, and we forgive anyone in our lives who needs to be forgiven, and we thank you for that opportunity now. God, thank you for the places in our lives that are difficult for the places in our world where we see agony and mystery combined and a lack of hope. We know that around that corner is magnificent hope and we pray for people in all circumstances where the road is rough and the way is difficult. Lord, carry us if you need to carry us. Walk with us. Do not desert us and lead us to your way. Open up the light in front of every person who needs it. And most of all, help us to know, every person here, how very much you love him or her. And that you'll always be there. And that you're involved in our lives. And we can ask you anything. And we can tell you anything. And we can be close to you. And that is the sweetest part of life. And now, Lord, come and hear the prayers of your people. Oh, God, thank you for being able to bring all the things on our hearts to you in prayer, those things that have been said aloud, and those things that remain in the silence of our hearts. We thank you that early in the morning today can usher in a whole day of being in communion with you. May we not only have words to say, but ears to hear. And now, Lord, through the power of your spirit, we pray that you would go out into the world doing wonderful, miraculous work in the lives of each person and circumstance we have lifted up to you today. May your glory shine. We ask this in faith and hope through the saving work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture lesson is on page 989 in your pew Bibles. We read the first part of John's 20th chapter last week on Easter Sunday. And this morning we read the second part of John's 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, 
I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. You are welcome to choose your own moniker, but if it were up to me, I might dub the age we're in as the age of scandal. Every day, it seems, we don't have to look far to be confronted with the latest public scandal, and most people just can't get enough. Often, celebrities are the ones at the center of the newsworthy scandal, who is coming in and out of rehab, who managed to offend someone else with an off-the-cuff remark, who had a less-than-secret tryst with another person. When it comes to public scandal, politicians and elected officials probably rank a close second. How many men and women have had their political aspirations dashed in the wake of some unseemly activity or rumor-filled innuendo. And maybe athletes occupy third place on the list as we watch our sports heroes fall precipitously from grace. Furthermore, there are times when real life celebrity and political scandal is not enough to quench our insatiable appetite. So we tune into reality television and we binge watch other fictional TV dramas so we can get our fill. All of which leads to the question, why is it that we are so fascinated with scandals? Why is our culture so obsessed with the shocking and sometimes immoral things people have done or are believed to have done? Is it as simple as the entertainment value we derive by watching someone else's dirt uncovered? Does witnessing someone else's life implode make us feel a little better about our own lives? Do we love watching a scandal so that we can start rooting for the scandal maker's redemption? We do appreciate a second chance comeback story almost as much as the scandal story that preceded it. Given our collective fixation on scandals, you would think you'd hear more conversation, teaching people how to handle scandal in their lives. For that matter, you'd think you'd hear more conversation among Christian people about how to help people struggle through and ultimately move past scandal. Unfortunately, that's a topic you don't hear discussed too often. Instead, many communities of faith pretend that no one among them has ever had to deal with a situation of damage control in their lives. It's easier and it's cleaner and it's less time-consuming to at least give the outward impression that people of faith have it all together, enjoying pristine and untarnished lives. Yet, if we are truly honest, churches and other faith communities are filled with people who have had to deal with challenging situations, scenarios that have threatened their livelihoods, their reputations, their integrity, and even their dignity. Whether that scandal involves a divorce, an affair, 
a home foreclosure, a bankruptcy, an alcohol problem, an unexpected job loss, an unwanted pregnancy, or some other life crisis. Chances are good most of us will eventually face situations in our public or private lives that require us to know how to handle a scandal. The good news is that the Bible, handy instruction manual that it is, has some insight about this very subject. In this morning's scripture lesson from the Gospel of John, there is a scandal developing in the text, and someone needed to step up and take charge of the damage control. The scandal unfolded on Easter morning last Sunday when Mary Magdalene visited the tomb of Jesus only to find that there was no body inside. In her shock and disbelief, Mary had no idea what to do, but she made a logical assumption. Somebody had stolen Jesus. Meaning before the empty tomb was ever considered a symbol of the resurrection, it was viewed as a sign of illicit activity. As notorious and ever-present as they are in the year 2018, the Easter event 2,000 years ago undoubtedly inspired its own share of cynics and conspiracy theorists. The whole thing was a hoax, the skeptics likely argued perpetrated by followers of Jesus who took the body away in the middle of the night and then set out to cover the whole thing up. Thankfully, the Easter story doesn't end with an empty tomb. Rather, the Easter story continues with a God who winds up showing us a blueprint for how to work our way through scandal and emerge triumphant on the other side. In the Easter verses we read from the Gospel of John last week, we eventually realized that Jesus was not dead. According to last Sunday's scripture lesson, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, told her that he was alive and well, and informed her that he would soon ascend to his Father in heaven. With this powerful initial act of appearing in front of Mary, Jesus took the first steps necessary to address the impending scandal. In the wake of the horror of the crucifixion and the utter shock of the empty tomb, right off the bat, Jesus showed us how to cope effectively with some of the messiness in our own lives. The most important thing Jesus did was not go into hiding. He revealed himself and he made his identity known to the people who loved him. As you and I can attest, when we are going through a personal struggle or turmoil of some sort, our initial inclination is often to try and escape from the trouble, effectively push others away and then isolate ourselves without the support we need from the people who are closest to us. While there may be a time and a place for retreat in the midst of scandal, at some point that time comes to an end. And we need to do what Jesus did, make ourselves visible find the courage to open up and be vulnerable. As long as we stay hidden and quiet, we cede power to shame and embarrassment and guilt. But when we reveal ourselves and the deep, dark secrets we hold inside, we make it possible for God's restoration and God's redemption to enter in and take over. What starts out as a scandalous story moves in the direction of becoming a salvation story. The risen Jesus chose to make himself visible 
And when he did, Jesus gave tremendous hope to his followers. All those people who were sad and aimless and numb with grief. When Jesus made himself known, they in turn gave rise to the Christian church in its earliest form. And yet, Jesus didn't just stop at making himself known. At the beginning of this morning's scripture lesson, Jesus appeared to his disciples and told them his story. He showed them the nail marks in his hands and in his side. He offered them a word of peace. And before their eyes, Jesus unraveled every false narrative that was probably being spread in the wake of of the crucifixion. Like the story that the disciples had been fools for following a man who died as a total failure. The story that Jesus didn't really have any personal, intimate relationship with God or he wouldn't have died the way he did. The story that Jesus was no different and certainly no better than any other man in first century Israel who tried to claim he was the Messiah. Or maybe that conspiracy theory I mentioned early in this sermon. The story about how the body of Jesus had been carried away by his followers under the veil of darkness as some kind of publicity stunt. But the profound beauty in this morning's scripture lesson is that Jesus discredited all those other stories simply by sharing his own story when Jesus showed his disciples his wounds, he proved to them that he had experienced suffering and death. More importantly than that, Jesus stood before them in the flesh as a living testament that death did not prevail. Any redemption story, whether it's the story of Jesus and the resurrection or our own story, has the power to inspire us if we choose to let it. As powerful as any song we sing, any Bible passage we read, any sermon we might preach or hear is the personal story of God's love transforming our lives. To be sure, there are times when we try to bury and avoid the struggles that we endure because we're worried about how others will react and how others might judge us. We attempt to hide what we mess up, not trusting that God shows up when we open our hearts. By the same token, sometimes when we refuse to tell our own stories, somebody else is all too eager to jump in and tell the story for us. Gossip is far more interested in spreading the scandal than it is in getting the details of the story right in the first place. When we tell our own stories, though, we position ourselves to become wounded healers of other people. So if you have a story in your life, of a time when you have endured pain and persevered on account of the strength God gave to you, I hope you will go ahead and tell that story. If you've gone through hell and back in your life and you're still here and standing tall, don't be bashful. If there was a time in your life when you were knocked on your back, but God gave you another chance, let somebody know about it. If you've managed to survive a scandal in your own life and you've made yourself vulnerable and you've outlived the rumors and the gossip long enough to set the story straight, then step up and be brave. Let others see God's glory in your story. Amen. Amen.
Easter day with joy was bright. The sun shone out with terror light when to their longing eyes restored the glad apostles saw their Lord. His risen flesh with radiance glowed, his wounded hands he showed, though scars their solemn with gave that Christ was risen from the grave. The strong in gentleness come now yourself hearts possess that we may view all our days the tribute of our grateful praise come risen Christ with us abide in this our joyful Easter tide your own redeemed forever shield from every weapon death can wield let us give our offering this day in deep gratitude for Christ who comes among us revealing himself to us in all his power and glory. The offering will be received. Creator Christ and 
Spirit one. Amen. Holy God, bless these gifts. And bless each one of us that we might boldly proclaim the good news of your resurrection joy here where we live and around our world. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Go out into the world now to be resurrection people. Proclaim to all whom you see and you meet that you too have seen the Lord. And go in a spirit of deep joy and peace, knowing that Christ the Lord is risen in this joyous Easter season. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs> 